Hey, dreamer. Sit back and relax. I'll take you to your next dream. Hey, Cupcake. Hey. You know, you shouldn't make it a habit to sleep on the couch. It's not really healthy for you. Mm hmm I mean, you're not wearing a blanket. It'll catch a cold. <laughs> I can barely understand you, Cupcake. <laughs> mm, looks like someone's really tired. Hmm? All right. I'm going to turn off the TV, okay? Ah, 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 ah. No buts. <laughs> Cupcake, you're barely awake. <laughs> I'm not even sure you'll remember this when you wake up. Hey, you know... We can pause it for now, and we can pick it up again tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Besides, I'm getting tired too. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to sleep a bit early tonight. Yeah, it'll be good for our body clocks. You know... Sleeping early and waking up earlier, too. Yeah, maybe we can wake up early tomorrow and we can do anything you want. Maybe prepare a more interesting breakfast. How about waffles? You like waffles, don't you? Mm -hmm. In the morning, not now. <laughs> Yes, Cupcake, we're gonna give you those nice fluffy waffles, crispy on the outside, and soft on the inside. Speaking of soft, I changed the bed sheet earlier today. Mm hmm and I used those brand new softeners that we bought yesterday. Oh yeah, they turned out really, really nice. Mm -hmm. They smell good and they're really soft to the touch. Would you care to join me? <laughs> That's what I'd like to hear, Cupcake. Alright, shall we go? What? You want me to carry you? Cupcake, you're not a kid anymore. You can go to the bedroom by yourself. No, don't give me that pouty face. Mm. Not the pouty face, no. Mm. Oh, fine. <laughs> but I'm not carrying you like a princess. I'm going to give you a piggyback ride. Okay? On my back. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's easier to carry you that way. All right, come here. Uh, I need your help here. Legs around my waist. Good girl. And uh, hold on tightly onto my shoulders. Okay. Good. <laughs> Let's go. <clears throat> Onward to the bed. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Cupcake. Could you 
help me with the door. Um, <laughs> my hands are full lifting you up by the legs here. Come on, just, just turn the knob. All right. I'll kneel a bit so you can reach it easier. Okay. Good. All right. Let's get you to the bed. And... Uh, there we go. <laughs> wow. It took that much to get you to the bed, huh? You're really hopeless, you know. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me close the door. <laughs> what are you doing? Cupcake. <laughs> oh, God. Are you going to hug all the blankets to yourself? <laughs> no, you're not a cocoon. You're my cupcake. My sweet little cupcake. And my sweet little cupcake better be sharing that blanket. Hmm? <laughs> That's the only one. You don't want your boyfriend to freeze now, do you? Come on, it'll be so much warmer with me under the bed with you. <laughs> okay, scooch over. <clears throat> what are you doing? Hey. <laughs> Are you struggling to get a good position to sleep in? <laughs> I swear. Come here. You know, the best place, the most comfortable place for you is right here. That's right. Come here. Ah, cuddle up with me. That's right. Put your head on my chest. Just like you always do. <laughs> there we go. Ah, finally settled down, huh? <laughs> I swear, you're so bratty today. <laughs> well, I don't hate it. But I don't love it either. But uh, I suppose you are my brat. <laughs> All right, go to sleep. I'll turn off the light. What? Okay, so let me get this straight. You... Refuse to go to the bed, and only after me persuading you, and me carrying you all the way to the bedroom, and tucking you in, are you finally settled down. And on top of that, you have the audacity to ask a bedtime story for me. <laughs> Cupcake. Alright, okay, fine. Fine. I'll read you a story, but you have to promise me to sleep right after, okay? Promise? Binky promise? Binky promise, binky promise. There we go. That means you can't break it. Okay. Um... Let's see, uh, I don't have any bedtime stories. 
but I do have this book. It's one of my favorite life adventure novels. I'm not quite sure what the genre is either. It's called The Alchemist, and it's a, it's a book about a character who's uh, trying to look for his treasure. And it's basically a metaphor for life and how everyone in this world, including you and me, in this life, we're all trying to look for a treasure. And treasure for many different people mean different things. Uh, it could be literal treasure, like gold coins, maybe fancy clothing, parchments, knowledge. It could also mean your life purpose, something that you strive to achieve. And yeah, it's all about always trying to look for that treasure and never losing sight of it. And at the same time, not losing sight of who you are. <laughs> it's a great book. I've only been uh, halfway done. I just started reading it yesterday, actually. It's really easy to read. I'll read uh, an excerpt from the book. It really resonated with me when I read it yesterday. Okay. Um, let me try to look for it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's called The Secret to Happiness. So our hero, Santiago, he come upon this old king. And before they parted ways, the king gave Santiago a piece of wisdom. A single story. And I think it's really beautiful. Ah, I found it. All right. <clears throat> Are you nice and comfortable? Okay, good. <clears throat> A certain shopkeeper sent his son to learn about the secret of happiness from the wisest man in the world. The lad wandered through the desert for forty days, and finally came upon a beautiful castle, high atop a mountain. It was there that the wise man lived. Rather than finding a saintly man, though, our hero, on entering the main room of the castle, saw a hive of activity. Tradesmen came and went, people were conversing, in the corners. A small orchestra was playing soft music, and there was a table covered with platters of the most delicious food in that part of the world. The wise man conversed with everyone, and the boy had to wait for two hours before it was his turn to be given the man's attention. The wise man listened attentively to the boy's explanation of why he had come but told him that he didn't have time just then to explain the secret of happiness. He suggested that the boy look around the palace and return in two hours. Meanwhile, I want to ask you to do something, said the wise man, handing the boy a teaspoon that held two drops of oil. As you wander around, carry the spoon with you without allowing the oil to spill. The boy began climbing and descending the many stairways of the palace, keeping his eyes fixed on the spoon. After two hours, he returned to the room where the wise man was. Well, asked the wise man, did you see the Persian tapestries that are hanging in my dining hall? Did you see the garden that it took the master gardener ten years to create? Did you notice the beautiful parchments in my library? The boy was embarrassed and confessed that he had observed nothing. His only concern had been not to spill the oil that the wise man had entrusted to him. Then go back and
and observe the marvels of my world, said the wise man. You cannot trust a man if you don't know his house. Relieved, the boy picked up the spoon and returned to his exploration of the palace, this time observing all of the works of art on the ceilings and the walls. He saw the gardens, the mountains all around him, the beauty of the flowers, and the taste with which everything had been selected. Upon returning to the wise man, he related in detail everything he had seen. But where are the drops of oil I entrusted to you? asked the wise man. Looking down at the spoon he held, the boy saw that the oil was gone. Well, there is only one piece of advice I can give you, said the wisest of wise men. The secret of happiness is to see all the marvels of the world and never to forget the drops of oil on the spoon. <laughs> Did you get it? Well, I think everyone has a slightly different interpretation. But for me, I believe that the drops of oil represent our duties in life. Things that define who we are, what we must do. For example, going to work or since I'm an artist, drawing is my two drops of oil. And the secret of happiness is to simply enjoy everything else that the world has to offer. You know, all the little things that we often miss, like how beautiful a sunrise is. You know, enjoying our time together like this, cuddling with you. I feel like that's what makes a person happy. The feeling of fulfillment when you've done what you need to do, and at the same time, being able to enjoy life to the fullest. <laughs> you too tired to think about it? All right. Why don't you sleep on it then? If you're still interested in the book, I'll uh, finish it up as quickly as I can, and I'll lend it to you. And we can discuss all we want. All right. Good night, Cupcake. Sweet dreams. Mm.